Okay, hello everybody. This is Amin and this is Alex. And, <laughs> and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About. Obviously, uh, this one is slightly different because we are all in uh, in day 34 of movement control order. Um Alex is uh, in his house and I'm in the office because uh, this is like the most quietest environment I can be in. Uh So I took I took the drive out. I'm safe. Uh, I I I I didn't come into contact with people. I'm all by myself, so we're good. Um, and uh, welcome to another episode. So we want to keep the show running and then going. And despite the challenges, I know this is like a very challenging time for everybody. This is a very interesting time for everybody. Um, but as much as possible, at least for me and uh, personally, I would like to start now looking forward to continuing life uh, back to normal again. Whatever that normal may be moving forward. Um, so in this episode, we're going to talk about like what has happened uh, throughout the MCO. It's uh, like I said, 34 days now. I treat it as six days. 36 days now, and uh, we're going to look forward to. It's very likely that an extension is uh, going to happen. By the way, uh, today is the 22nd of April, so obviously this show will come out a little later from today. So just uh, for reference, uh, everybody, where. Uh, this is 22nd of April. Our setup is different. Obviously, you can see I have a headset on and Alex has a earphone on. Uh, I have to apologize with regards to the quality of the footage and also the sound. Uh, but given the circumstances, this is the best that we can do right now. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the show. We are also available on podcast. So uh, keep an eye. Uh, just search f- uh, for Soi Chin Chow. Let's talk about on any of your favorite podcast platform, uh, whether it's Spotify or everything else. We are there. Um, uh, we'll be on Apple Podcast pretty soon. Okay, so let's uh, now get to the show. So today we're going to talk about life in MCO and how we are using technology to cope, or how actually technology is making things better um, on a day-to-day basis. I don't, un- I don't see. I mean, I can't imagine how uh, movement control the would be. If we don't have what we have today, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, put them in the comment section below. How would life? If would life be different, in if the MCO, if if technology like internet and uh, you know things like Discord, we're using Discord uh, to to do the stream, uh, Zoom and 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 Teams are not around to help you do work and computers are not powerful. Would it be different or would it be better or worse? Okay, Alex. Uh, I'm handing this over to you. How has MCO been for you so far? Well, in terms of work, um, I think it's pretty much the same as how we used to last time. Before we had a full on setup, we always been working from home. So, uh, I think we are fortunate that we are an online based uh company. Uh, as long as just internet, we can get a job done. But of course, uh, there are certain things that um are quite restrictive. Like for example, we can't go to the office as often to shoot a video. So we have to do it at home. And in terms of communications, uh, I guess it's it's good that we have all the tools right we have right now. We have WhatsApp, we have Slack, we have Discord to do face to face conversations. So I guess that's a huge uh, benefit for us right now. And I think this is the right time that we really appreciate that you know broadband can really ensure that everything is running smoothly despite we are in being in a lockdown. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Like imagine right if we like a couple of years back. We didn't have broadband as much as we have it now, or it's not as af- affordable as it is now. Uh, we don't have 4G. Uh, 4G of or, or, or smartphones are not as cheap as they are, relatively cheap as they are yep. now. Um, wow, I didn't I didn't think of it that way, man. It could be like super difficult for a lot of people as it is. And I think you brought a good point. Um, I think one of the challenges, apart from just being at work, is for children to be at school. So. Um, You know, I guess my kids are fortunate. They have uh, iPads that they can use to to for the teachers to t- to teach them. But I don't know how s- children in the rural areas are coping with this. I, obviously, they don't have iPads. Obviously, I don't think they have computers. Maybe they have some tablets. Yeah, I I also agree with you that you know at least the Swedish Show team is geared for this. So I'm I'm very grateful and fortunate to see that. Uh, the the team are uh, despite being far apart from each other. Some of you are staying in the opposite end of the of of Clan Valley. Uh, for me, I'm staying in Shalam. Alex is in uh, Damansara. We're very far apart, but you know, thanks to technology and thanks to internet and all that, we are closer than ever. <laughs> I think <laughs> you can say that. Yeah, so we can actually resume our life uh, like close to normal as possible. 
like imagine if like 15 years back there's no they we still have 3g and there's no fiber connectivity i think we'll be spending more time over phone on the voice calls all the time doing teleconferencing and that's going to be hard to relay your message across sometimes yeah how do you say things right or how do you describe things and then and then there's no email so how do you send well maybe 15 years i don't know yeah there, there, there is there, email, but, email but, but how do you, you send attachments you can't send huge files. You can't send like HD video over. One one of my friends on Facebook asked this question: like, if if things were if if MCO was uh, done like ten, fifteen years ago, twenty years ago, would it be? How would people survive? For me, it's like a catch twenty two. Um, number one is okay without the technology, maybe things would be more boring if the MCO is extended. Um, but I would think also people will find way. So I think for me, at least the way I see it, if, if it was done 15 years ago, we will be talking to our neighbors more. Uh, fake news will be difficult to spread. There won't be any fake news because it will be... There's no Facebook. There's no WhatsApp back then. Yeah, yeah. There's not going to be any face, fake news because people will depend on newspapers. If it was 15 years ago, I think maybe all of us can be PhDs or doctors or something. <laughs> I think that there'll be more time to do to do things. I guess each generation have their own advantage and disadvantages. La. Yeah, I guess the disadvantage if, if it's happened like 15 years ago is that a lot of people will not be able to work. I think that's the biggest challenge. And that could risk a lot of business and I think possibly more people will be out of jobs. Yes, that's a very good point. I mean, the reason why I brought this up is because a lot of people... I mean, I see I see a lot of comments on Facebook and all that. Some, you know, some some stress out that, you know, being in, in MCO is difficult, being in, in, in MCO is stressful because there's a lot of uncertainties and unknowns and, and I have to agree... Uh, and to a certain degree, we are all very fortunate to be in the situation that we're in. You know, we have a fairly large area to be... To, you know, we have not large area. To say that we have uh, our own private spaces, la, be it a room or whatever. Imagine people who are renting or people who are living in households that have 10 people, 12 people. It's quite difficult to just stay at home and not go crazy and not, not go at each other's necks. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that, you know, despite all this, it's very important to remain positive and very important to just look forward to what's going to happen in the future. So a lot of people have been asking me, hey, um, I mean, um, what what's your outlook? What do you think is going to happen in the future? Well, um, I'm, not a, I'm not a soothsayer or whatever. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But I think I would like to imagine or like to envision how my future will, would be like meaning that i i want to think of positive things and i want to see how we move on from this i would like for us to start con- to start thinking about going back to normal to start thinking about living our lives again and whatever that normal is in shape or form whether we need we stay home more whether we move around less whether we need to be more diligent in terms of cleaning our hands and be and 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 private uh, social distance, distancing needs Same, to be yep. more um it doesn't matter i f- i just want to start looking at things i i miss my formula 1 races i miss <laughs> my moto gp races a lot of you sport fans out there may be the same thing uh, what do you miss alex in terms of i, I you have a dog right so yep. how d- how does he cope i mean he needs to walk yeah so it's not easy for him as well because he also feels like you know restless like hey you need to go out and all that but uh, first two weeks is quite tough, but now I think he's okay. So basically, mm-hmm. he do his business at home now. <laughs> yeah, but of course, he's getting fatter, lah. <laughs> so, so how does he exercise? Well, I need to chase him around the house, lah. That's the only best option right now. <laughs> Play hide and seek and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's that's tough, man. I mean, I have I have kids as well, so they they play at the porch now. I mean, and again, you know, I'm so fortunate that I have a porch, I have a backyard that they can run, run at least. Yeah. But imagine people who are in apartments or flats. They some people have not even gone down to the ground floor for thirty days. Yeah, especially those on an EMCO. Yeah. It's more restrictive. Yeah. Yeah. I just hope that things will get better and and I, I and I and I know that things will get better but I don't know how long this is going to be speaking of things getting better right so wh- you you've you've been diligently looking at the numbers 
every day looking at the new cases and death. So yep. what 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 can you say about that? How are we doing compared to the rest of the world? How are we doing compared to like our neighbors? Okay, I think in terms of Malaysia, um I think the the first thing that we have to say is that I think the EMC the the MCO, the movement control order has really helped a lot to reduce the spread of the disease and as mentioned by the Prime Minister last time, is that the reason why we do this is to ensure that we have enough uh, capacity in the healthcare system to treat new cases so that there's no a uh, huge surge that can burden the system. And like for the past uh, few days, uh, let me check, I think it should be the past five or six days, we've been recording less than 100 new cases. So that's um, an early sign of progress that the MCO is working. And... If you ask me whether we're going to leave the MCO soon, I think not so soon. I think we probably need a couple of further more extensions to ensure that we're really safe. Um, even the Health Director General, uh, Dr. No Hisham Abdullah, he actually shared like uh, the six criteria that we need before, e- the, before the MCO is lifted. So the first one would be to ensure that there's no more new import cases. So right now, um, our borders are closed. So no one from overseas can come in, except for returning Malaysians. And I think what the government has done recently is pretty good, it, uh, whereby any returning Malaysians uh, coming back from the 3rd of April, if not mistaken, they have to be quarantined at the designated zone. You can't go home and self-isolate. You need to go to a special place. I think you read the news that some of them are being placed at four-star, five-star hotels for two weeks. And apparently, um, there are 95 positive cases from those people who are quarantined. Yeah, imagine if we didn't quarantine them and they go back to their respective homes. They could be spreading to the households, like the old folks could get it. Yeah, 95 could be 1,000, 1,000 could be 2,000. It could go crazy. Earlier last month, I think Malaysia was the highest num- has the highest number of cases in Southeast Asia. Mm. But now we're no longer the, the highest. I think Singapore, Indonesia, the Philippines has overtake, overtaken us. And mm. I think that's partly because we have the MCO. And at a time... At today, right now, uh, we have about 5,500 cases. Uh, with, today, uh, today, like I just want to remind our viewers and listeners, yeah. it's 22nd of April today. Okay. 22nd April. Uh-huh. So we have 5,532 cases mm. and 62% of people have recovered. So that's a good sign. And I think for the past uh, one week, we've been recording quite consistently more recoveries than new cases. Mm-hmm. So it's a good sign. And mm. going back to Dr. Uh, no Hisham Abdullah's um, uh, announcement to ensure that we can lift the MCO uh, we need to fulfill a few things number one is to protect our borders to make sure there's no more new importation of cases so he mentioned six things right so number yes. one is borders must be clo- no import cases yes number two is borders must be closed uh, number one is bo- that's the same number one is borders <laughs> must be closed basically okay. no more new cases for overseas okay. so okay. everything is from inside Okay. And secondly, is to able to control the infection. So we need to make sure that, you know, we do not infect more people internally. Mm. So that's what the MCO is doing right now. Mm. So before we can consider lifting MCO, uh, we need to reach to a point that we don't record more than 10 cases per day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that means to... that's like still a long way to go though. We're yeah, like, still a long we're way. We're still above 50, but below yes. 100. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So that's why I, I reckon that it probably take another two weeks or maybe a month before it bring down to that level. Okay. But it's a sign of progress. Mm. Yeah, and, yeah, for sure. And the, uh-huh. and the third one is the healthcare system capability. So we need to ensure that we have enough wards, enough ICU, mm. and also we need to improve our testing capabilities as well. Um, in terms of testing capabilities, um, previously, I don't know about now, uh, it was mm. reported that we only can do 10,000 tests per day. Mm. And that's excluding repeats. So mm. it could be a possibility that one patient might test twice to for confirmation. Mm. So uh, the government has uh, has announced that they're making setting up five more labs throughout the country. Mm. So hopefully we should be able to bring the number of, of testing capability to sixteen thousand per day. So that's the mm. testing capability side. Okay. And the next criteria is we should be able to protect the high risk and vulnerable groups. Mm. Are we able to protect you know the elderly, the handicapped, uh, those who have additional diseases? Because you need to ensure that people can still get the treatment even in the MCO. So that's, mm. the, that's the one point. And the fifth one is to ensure that Malaysians can comply with social distancing. Just mm. because the MCO is lifted doesn't mean we can go around, yeah. hug people, shake hands and all that. We <laughs> still need to practice social distancing. Yeah. There was an article, uh, some, uh, someone has written an article that um, these social distancing practices might need to prolong until 2022. Mm. 
So it's not something that we can just stop immediately. So that's something that we need to practice for a long time. And that also means that we won't be having any events or gatherings for maybe at least a year or two. At least until the social, dis- uh, not social distancing, at least until the vaccine has been found. Yeah. So that's another at least 12 to 16 to 18 months before that happens. So how many of those criteria have we met already? Of those six criteria? Uh, I think maybe number one. So far, so good. Number one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh. Uh, but we still got new cases because there's still Malaysians returning. So that's still ongoing. Yeah, import yeah. cases are coming in. I think social distancing, I, I think we are complying, but uh, Malaysians are generally quite tidak apa and relax. In, in I mean, we're quite chill lah, you know. Yeah. If if we have to do it, we do it. After that, if nobody is looking or nobody like really <laughs> police it, we kind of like... Ah, tak apa lah. Never yeah, mind so lah. Never mind lah. It's okay. You're healthy. I'm healthy. What's the problem? Let's just That's makan right. lah. Because yeah. makan is important, right? Correct. <laughs> Every, everything, everything doesn't beat makan, right? Hey, everybody, let's come and makan. So... Okay, I just wanted to add to what you're saying. Beyond the six points, right? The the mm. I, I, I want to clarify that a lot of people think that okay, you know, once MCO is lifted, COVID nineteen doesn't exist anymore. It's going to be here for as long as we don't have a vaccine. Yeah. And it and it's going to be here um you know, uh, regardless of whatever, right? What 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 I wanted to say is that the reason why MCO is happening and even if MCO gets lifted, it doesn't mean uh, COVID-19 doesn't exist. It just means that we can control it to a point where it won't overwhelm our health system. It means that if people get sick, our hospitals can cope. Our hospital staff can cope. Right now, the concern is the MCO and everything is not to stop people from being infected strictly per se. It's to stop people from being infected at the same time. So, um, if you are watching this, if you are listening to this, what uh, the MCO, whether it's in effect right now and whether it's going to be lifted after this, uh, what's important is for us to maintain that discipline of per, uh, good hygiene, always washing your hands uh, properly, uh, social distancing, uh, and you know, just, just not be so gung-ho out there in, in terms of like touching and, and feeling and, and, and things. Another so, thing is that if you're sick, right, wear a mask, you know, don't cough anywhere like, <coughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Need, need to be more um, socially aware, la, I guess. Um, okay, with regards to the numbers, uh, I think we discussed this and, and uh, in one of our chats, uh, we spoke to this and Rory brought some good points. He mentioned that, hey, are we doing so much better than Singapore? Uh, because uh, today, uh, okay, today I don't know what the numbers are today, twenty second of April. But yesterday it was a thousand plus case, new cases. Yep. We've we've never reached a thousand cases before. That's nope. like at least ten times the the number that we've got. Yeah, Singapore today, as of today, they have ten thousand cases in total right now. It's crazy. Okay, so then yeah, uh, Rory raised a very good question. Is like, are we really that much better off than Singapore or? we're not looking at something here, that we're missing something here. I can't give a definitive answer, but uh, I think one of our contributors, uh, Dr. Ama, who is a doctor, mm. he mm. shared uh, his opinion about the, the numbers. What we need to look into is the number of tests that we do on a daily basis. Mm. So again, I think even MOH has admitted that, you know, our testing capabilities can be better mm. because right now we only can test 10,000 per day but they're trying to ramp it up to 16,000 per day. So one example that Dr. Amar has provided is like, uh, like, for example, Canada. I think Canada at one point, they have the same number of cases as Malaysia mm. on the same, started at the same level. And all of a sudden, you know, Canada just shoot up like crazy. I think on the 1st of April, Malaysia was hovering about 4,000 cases and Canada has 15,000 cases. So on the surface, a lot of people say, oh, look at the Canadians, they should learn from Malaysia like, how to control the, the COVID cases. But mm-hmm. if you look in the number of of tests being conducted. Um, Canada is testing about 8,000 people per million mm. and Malaysia is doing less than 2,000 people per million. Mm. So the number of tests conducted is different. So in a way, you test little, you get smaller numbers, which is mm. true. Mm. But whether we're doing right or wrong is debatable. Um, okay, number one, the difference is that number one, Malaysia has more stringent lockdown. I don't say lockdown, MCO, to yeah. prevent movement. Yeah, Whereas other countries... Yeah, yeah okay. so that allows us to 
do a more targeted approach. So yeah. uh, I think the past month, you can see the government announced EMCO. So there's more uh, stringent in terms of restrictions. They can't leave the compound at all. I think that one's like, that one you can call a lockdown because you really yes. cannot go out of the house. So I don't think they want to call it lockdown. So they call it enhanced MCO. E, uh, MCO. It makes it sound positive or, or not so positive or sexy. <laughs> MCO yeah, yeah, yeah. plus. <laughs> yeah, MCO. <laughs> MCO Pro Max. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. once they identify the area, then they can uh, conduct more like mass testing in, in these uh, sectors. Because in, in a way, in it's those like... hot hot zones. La. Correct. So that's yeah, like yeah. a more targeted approach. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's true that they actually got more cases from there. So I guess yep. that way is better. For me, the take out from this is like Malaysia. We do it our style, lah. I think, I think for me, I'm proud of that. Like we are doing this our way. We're doing this the way Malaysians do this, and it's successful to a certain degree. Obviously, people are listening, and I don't want to diss Singaporeans, so I don't want to be like nationalistic here. But it's a bit weird how things are going on over there, like. They call it circuit breaker, which is like, <laughs> what? Um, I I know they want to make it sound positive, but it's weird. And then, on the day before the circuit breaker uh, came into effect, um, people Singaporeans raided IKEA for Why? I don't know for no. So there were reports of I- the IKEA in Singapore being like super packed. For I don't know what reason, um, and I, w- I would like to believe that they're probably looking for a new table to enable them to work from home. <laughs> not for the yeah. meatballs, <laughs> definitely not for the meatballs, man. I don't know, man. Um, you know, so I guess uh, different countries have different challenges, and I have to agree with Rory. It's curious that our numbers are better, but uh, I don't want to discount the fact that we are doing things better than maybe Singapore, better than Italy. Uh, better than every everywhere else, but I'm not I'm not saying that in terms of like, hey, we did it, did it better than you because a life loss is a life loss, and I don't want to discount that. But I'm just proud that you know um, we have Dr. Hisham. Uh, I think he plays like a key part in making sure that we are doing this proper, um, and and that you know we we are utilizing the tools that we have in hand. So I just want to bring a point where. Uh, there's a curious case in South Korea. Um, they they are surviving uh, COVID-19 without the need of a lockdown. And it, and it is because of technology. So they've learned from... they Previously, I think a few years back, they had a very bad case of MERS, the <coughs> Middle Eastern Resp- Respiratory Syndrome. And they learned a lot from that and they developed an app. Uh, it's a app that knows where you've been. Um, it doesn't track you per se, but it's... It traces your route and if you've come into contact with somebody that's infected or if you have become infected, it will alert everybody that's, that's within that same route to say that a person has been infected with COVID-19 and you need to stay away. That's basically how South Korea handles the situation. Uh, they use technology and information. They let um, scientists take the lead, people who are in the know to take the lead rather than politics taking the lead. I see that to a certain degree um, what's happening in Malaysia. I see uh, Dr. Hisham doing very well. I see him taking the lead most of the time. I don't see uh, Muhyiddin, for example, trying to like make announcement all the time. Muhyiddin uh, move is also right that he's only announcing like really, really important stuff. Everything else is the ministers uh, or the people who are in charge. Um, they're doing that. Um, so that's a good thing. But the problem is I'm seeing also politicking starting to happen. Uh, recently, I think it was yesterday. Again, this is the 22nd of April. Yesterday, we saw KJ and Hishamuddin made an announcement. Uh, I didn't follow it closely, but you mentioned that it was about uh, testing of vaccination. So do you know what that's about? I didn't really read through that. But for me, it's like, huh? it's a bit confusing because you have a foreign affairs minister and then yeah. you have... The, the Mosti Minister, Minister of Science and Technology and uh, Innovation there. Yeah. I think we didn't fully, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess one, one, of, the, <coughs> one of the things that is going to um, confuse the public right, is communication breakdowns. And one way to solve this problem is for all the agencies to have their announcements at the same time. 
in like a proper forum like okay so the 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 health dg announce something and then whoever wants to talk at the same time can talk so when people ask questions the people who are within that are supposed to answer the questions can answer the questions yeah. so having having like separate separate ministers and separate people making announcements especially ones that are not relevant like this one uh, announcing about the testing of vaccine is like really going to confuse people So um back to my point um uh, technology really helped South Korea cope with uh, COVID-19 without the need for a lockdown uh and back to the topic of this uh, LTA is how technology is helping us cope with MCO um I'm happy that we have an established ecosystem of delivery systems yeah. in Malaysia we have Grab we have Bungkusit we have Lala Move Lamuf. and Food whatever Panda. Uh, Food Panda whatever you name it we can get things quite easily and 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 I'm happy with that um my buying habits has changed as well significantly okay Alex how are you coping <laughs> I want to start with you first For me, it's like when I want to buy food, I still go to the grocery because it's still allowed to do so. But sometimes, if I want to eat my favorite food and all that, I always have Grab Food and Food Panda. No, no problems there. But even when it comes to shopping, right? During MCO, it's my first time for me to order meat from Shopee and have it delivered on the same day. <laughs> Frozen stuff. You, you ordered meat from Shopee? Yes. Apparently, you can order fish as well, fish and vegetables and all that. So yeah, it's an eye-opening experience for me, and I believe this MCO, right, is also an opportunity to Let the public know that you can actually do more things online. You can order mm. stuff from from online store, have it delivered fresh to your doorstep without going out. So, yeah, that if, if that actually encourages more e-commerce. And in fact, I think uh, Zamira has posted uh, something about e-commerce. So mm. there's some interesting trends. Mm. So I think e-commerce volume has increased by 50%, I think, mm-hmm. from during the e- during the MCO. Mm. So that's a, it's a clear sign that people are really you know going all out in terms of uh, online shopping. Yeah, well, again, I want to come back to this uh, societal problem. So we have the T T what T ten T T twenty T twenty and then M forty B forty B forty right. Technology has to a certain degree helped everybody, um, everybody, all walks of life in Malaysia. Yep. Um, grab for the for the B forties uh, and maybe to a certain degree for the M forties have provided like an uh, opportunity for people who do not have a job now to to at least find something to do a yeah. means of of finding an earning um i guess we are right smack in the middle of the M40 group uh, i think I, i i hope so again we are like super fortunate that we have this ability to order stuff ability to have it delivered ability to i want it now i get it now yeah and we don't really feel it it i i and i don't know i've not seen a lot of stories i've not seen a lot of reports of how the b40 segment is coping with the mco and i and 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 i i cannot even guess i cannot even imagine i just hope that they are doing as good or at least they are comfortable and they, they don't have uh, problems yeah um but at least to to the government's credit they they did announce some initiatives um mm. some are controversial but at least it's an opportunity for people to put food to the table so i get so just to recap um the government has like, announced like a cash uh, like a cash handout mm. for those on the N40 and B40 segments uh i think they're going to make two payments uh one in april and one in march And if you still need more cash, um, they're giving you the ability to withdraw cash from the EPF account. So mm. at least there's something to you know to at least to survive to to ensure that you can pay your rent, you mm. can still buy food. That's the that's the controversial one, right? You're referring to yeah, the EPF the... one. Okay, what 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 do you think about that? I think for me is okay, like like how Muidin puts it, right? It's like mm. only use it when if it's if absolutely it. necess- yeah, 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 absolutely yeah. necessary. Like don't yeah. use it to buy to pay your rent. You pay your yeah. bills, electricity yeah. bills, so that your electricity don't cut, get cut off because it's yeah. going to be hot if you don't have electricity. And to ensure that <laughs> there's food on the table, that's the most yeah. important thing. If you don't need yeah. it, don't withdraw. Yeah, I again. Um, uh, so a lot of people out there will 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 have a lot of things to say, but uh, after you've considered everything that's happened, happened, and after you consider what the government is doing, I think we are mostly 
good lah. The six months moratorium is like yes. it's, re- it's it's helpful for everybody. It doesn't matter what level you are. It's helpful not to require to pay for your loans and everything. I think that that helps a lot. Uh, it helps us have cash in hand. Um, yeah, I think to a certain degree, Malaysia is doing okay. Fingers crossed. Hopefully. We have Ramadan and Raya coming up, two of the biggest uh, festive seasons, two of the biggest milestones. Uh, it's yeah. one festive season. Mm. Um, I don't see MCO is going to be lifted uh, anytime soon. I don't think until, I think until after Raya. Um, but I also see that the government is kind of like loosening their their grip slightly. Like you can balik kampung now, right? You wrote a story about that. Oh, not yet. So, okay, to, for uh, clarification, yeah. uh, the government's trying to gauge who who plans to go interstate. Like, because okay. he, he's aware that some people, during, before the MCO was imposed, right, RPO rushed to their respective hometowns. You know, there was a huge jam on the past yeah, highway. Yeah, that, that, that was like a miscommunication there because uh, when yeah. the MCO was announced, uh, they didn't talk about uh, how you can travel interstate. And then suddenly there was another announcement that says you need forms and then the police wasn't aware. Yeah. So that was just a whole mess. I hope uh, the government learned from that. But now, yeah, they, they require an app, right? So they haven't, okay, they haven't announced that this is officially, uh, is an official thing. So mm. they want to gauge how people are interested of moving interstate. Mm. So starting on the 25th of April, um, Malaysians can apply through the app that's called Grab Malaysia. So mm. Grab Malaysia is like a, it's actually a contact tracing app by the MCMC and apparently this initiative is in collaboration with the police right now. So mm. you can register interest there. So it's actually like mm. registration interest. I want to go mm. from here to here mm. and you must state your, your name, <laughs> your how many family members are following you and your oh. itinerary. So basically, uh, when you're going, uh, where you're coming from, where you're heading to. And that's all stored in the app? Uh, I think it's I haven't, it's not live yet, so I uh-huh. assume that it will be submitted to a database somewhere which the police can access. Okay. And for those who can't research through the app, you mm. can do so at the police station. But mm. to prevent the same fiasco from happening Search. again, yeah. yes. <laughs> so say, make appointment first, you know, book your slot. Then, oh, re- really? Yeah? Yes. Yeah, you just <laughs> make appointment first, then you go to the police station. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, of course, the best way is to do through the app. That's much easier. Yeah. So yeah. after they collect the data, then they'll decide, okay, what's the pros and cons? And of course, this time they'll consult the Ministry of Health. So at the end of the day, the MOH will have the final say whether is this good to go or not. Oh, it's not like you can you can start to balik kampung lah. They are no. doing and I mean, yeah, that's registration, a good thing, man. Registration interest. Yeah, that's that's good, right? Yeah, I, there is. Yeah, I think that's a good way to do it lah. They even if they already have a decision in mind, the idea of Getting people involved in the decision making helps a lot, lah. I think I think that's a good thing. And then yep. having what what's this Grab Malaysia app? You you so, you wrote something about it, right? Yeah. So basically, it's a contact tracing app. So I I think you have seen apps like My Sejastra. My Sejastra, mm. I tried it for a bit. It's more like a like a risk evaluation app to see whether mm. you're high risk, low risk. Uh, mm. and also you can put your travel history, like where you mm. go, who you meet, and all that. Mm. Uh, for Grab Malaysia, it's different because it's like a contact tracing app, which is somewhat similar to what you get in uh, South Korea and China. Mm. So it actually uses your location data. So okay. when you install the app, you need the grant permission to, for it to access your GPS. Yeah. So in theory, this will trace wherever you've been. So let's say you go to the grocery store, to mm. like an e uh, to I don't know, a train station and all that. And mm. the app only does one thing right now, is to show a QR code. So this QR code could be useful at the at the hospitals. Checkpoints. Uh-huh. Checkpoints. So uh-huh. let's say if they don't feel, don't feel well and you go to the hospital and there will mm. be like a frontliner in front that mm. will try to determine whether you're high risk or not. Mm. So with the app, they will they'll have a separate app that can scan your QR code and that will determine whether you're high risk based on your location history. Yeah, yeah. And you cannot lie. So let's say someone got infected somewhere and you've been through that place. Yeah. Um, they will find out, oh, you're actually high risk. So go to this queue, for example, to have yeah. a proper a stringent check. Yeah, I think that's good. And, and and you brought a good point. Um I think during the earlier periods of MCO, a lot of the doctors uh complained that a lot of the cases that happened uh, during the, the new cases that happened during the early phase of MCO was because of people that really didn't honestly declare yeah. where they've been and yeah. what they've done and there was really no way to verify this. Correct. So there were cases where people go to clinic, they sit in the waiting room. 
uh, they having fever. They sit in the waiting room with a lot of uh, all the other visitors there. Uh, the nurse upon registration, the nurse asks, "Have you been in contact with people who have COVID? Have you been in areas where people have COVID?" And they say no and no and no. And then what happens is when they go to see the doctor for consultation, then the person says, and this is a true story. Um, the person says, "Oh, doctor, you know what? I actually wanted to just only tell this to you. Uh, yes, I've I've been in contact with somebody that has COVID, and now I have fever, and the ho- the whole clinic has to shut down." Yep. And and this not just happens at the clinic; it happens at hospitals as well. Uh, I I have a friend in university hospital. Uh, the emergency the emergency department had to shut down because somebody came and didn't honestly say, "Oh, I've been in contact with somebody that has that has COVID." So it's very irresponsible. It's it's okay. It's irresponsible, and you know what? Can, what can you expect from people, lah? You know. You can't even expect them to wash their hands properly. So what can you expect from people? So having this is good. Um, the issue with this is that in the US, they are developing a contact tracing app, and it has become a political mess because the people who are lobbying it are focusing on issues of privacy and and whatever lah. Now I want to come back to South Korea. One of the other reasons why they managed to overcome COVID nineteen without the need of a MCO or lockdown or whatever is, as a society, they've decided that we have to make sacrifices for the greater good of everybody. And one of the sacrifices that they made was to not forego, but to loosen the grip on privacy. And it's a sacrifice, and also, but it's a trust. On the authority side, that the authority said, you know, we're not going to use this for anything else, other than to trace where you've been, so that you can be safe. And and it's uh it's really um uh, transparent and and truthful. So if you are somebody that that goes to you know seedy places or do seedy things, then obviously you have something to hide lah. But if you're somebody that carries on life normally, then you know it's for the greater good. I I'm not sure what the conversation will be like in Malaysia, but from what I see based on the reporting, when based on the conversation on Facebook with regards to privacy and security, when it comes to the greater good, I'm surprised, and I I think you noted this as well. I'm surprised yep. that Malaysians are aware to are, are aware and they are ready to make that sacrifice to say that hey, you know what? If this is for the greater good, and that means I can leave, I can go and leave my house and. St- And do and and do normal things and 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 have a job, and if it requires me to install this app, then yeah, yeah, I, it's worth the it's worth the yeah, trade off. Yeah, yeah, I have to do that. So even that thing is being political politicalized right now. Um, we have my suggestion, and then apparently the minister of innovation is doing something also, right? Uh, you know, Mister Gas is using Bluetooth similar to what Google and Apple is using. Uh, it's not live yet. Yeah, mm. but it's using Bluetooth uh, technology. So what that does is it doesn't track location, but only tracks uh, who you con- make contact with. And of course, there's limitation of Bluetooth. Yep. Number one, you only contact other devices with Bluetooth. Bluetooth that has yeah. that has the app installed. Yep. And of course, Bluetooth, um, there are limitations as well. So if let's say you're living in a dense area, like yep. a condo or an apartment, mm. Mm. you could be detecting your neighbors upstairs, downstairs, yep. next door. Yep. And if let's say they got the they got uh, COVID nineteen positive, mm. you are affected as well. Mm. You be you just be false false positive. Yep. And also, if you go outside of Malaysia, let's say you go, you stay in somebody's room, you do, mm. you don't make any contact with anyone else. Mm. You mm. could be touching things like you're touching the handrail and all that, and yeah. it, it won't be detected through this app. At least with yeah. contact tracing, mm. let's say you're infected, they can trace mm. back where have you been in terms of location. Yep. So let's say in South Korea, they give example. So they can detect a man walking to a pharmacy, a grocery store, mm. a LRT station. So at least they know. Okay, now we know where to sanitize exactly. Yeah, and you brought a good point. Uh, in South Korea, this is this is exactly how it's done. Uh, the app that they have is location aware, number one. So it knows where you've been, but it's not tracking. So I want to make a clear distinction between what is the difference between tracking and tracing. So tracking tracks you while you are moving. So that's kind of like spying, and maybe that's the concern that oh you know people who are using this app can be spied upon. Um, here's the thing: you can uninstall the app if you want, and if you are not doing again CD things and you're not doing crime or you're not going to brothels or whatever, 
you're fine. Uh, you're not if you're not hiding things from your wife, you're fine. And this is the trade-off, and this is for the greater good. And I I really welcome this. I really welcome the Gerak Malaysia app because it is uh, location aware, as opposed to this app that the innovation minister is developing, which he has mentioned like during the early stages of MCO and it has still not come out yet. I think probably the reason why it's not come out yet is because uh, for this to work, I think this was brought up in France. So France is developing a similar app that uses Bluetooth tracing. Mm. But the issue with iOS is that you can't leave a Bluetooth running in the background all the time. All, yeah, all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I, you know, Miss Second, uh, Zamir also wrote the story. France, right, they actually asked iOS to leave this restriction. But mm. what they did was they point towards this new solution which they're working on that uses Bluetooth technology. And that's only coming, I think the API is coming out in May. But of course, France can't wait until May, man. They yeah, only need to do yeah. it now. So no. that's a limitation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have to use what we have now and we cannot wait for, for things to happen or else. Okay, this contact tracing application, right? And to get this application done right is key yes. to how fast we can end MCO. And I also want to say like, for those who are concerned about, uh, you know, privacy and all that, I think a lot of people didn't know that Google and Facebook are tracking your location anyway. Yeah. Like for example, Google time. Maps. Yeah, they mm. know exactly where you've been. Mm. If let's say you go to a restaurant for too long, they know that, oh, you've been to this restaurant. You want to review this restaurant? You don't yeah. see that. But it's actually tracking yeah. every single step. They are Facebook, Google. They know where you've been. They know how long you've been to somewhere. They know how often you go to somewhere. They even recommend <laughs> where yeah. you should go next or whatever. So I don't know. Like, privacy is a construct. I'm, I mean, I'm not to say it's a construct, but people are... <sighs> It's like for, exa- like, for example, the government knows a lot of things about you already. They, because they're the government, right? They know your, your income, they yeah. your IC, your passport, your, you know, everything about you. And then for them to know your location is not much different compared to, okay, what's worse? Government knowing everything about you versus a private company that knows yeah. everything about you and they're making money out of it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I really, I'm really rooting for this Grab Malaysia app to, to move. I'm really rooting for it to be required uh, for people to install uh, and I'm really rooting for it to be the key to us having a shorter MCO um, again I want to ref- refer to South Korea so they they have two different types of uh, contact tracing app one is for just normal people like you and me uh, we use it to just mm. uh, tell people that okay I've been here I've been there and it's like how you mentioned uh, you can scan the QR code the doctor will know the hospital will know where you've been and, and, and funnel you to whether you're high risk or low risk and that's a good thing the other one is for people who are yes, those who are under quarantine, those who just came back from from uh, from different countries, right? So they come back to Malaysia, for example. So this is how South Korea does it. If you come in and you are in quarantine, right, self quarantine, right, you have to install another app, and that app is attached to a, a person, a handler, and that app needs to be on your phone. So once you install that, right, and if you uninstall it, or if you turn off location, or if you turn off your phone the app will notify the handler and then the handler will come and look for you or at least go to your house. I think that uh, is something that we can implement right now and it helps. It helps because we don't have enough manpower. It helps because people are very uh, degil in Malaysia sometimes. Uh, you just want to go out. That's the reason why the government introduced mandatory uh, quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, because people know that they, they walk around, they maybe infect uh-huh. the neighbors. So after that, they said, you know what? You come back to Malaysia, stay in a hotel for two yeah. weeks, don't go, yeah. go out. And yeah. I guess that's the right decision. Yeah. Well, okay. I think uh, our time is almost up. Um, so this this episode of LTA, has been, we've been talking about like how technology is helping people cope with uh, the movement control order. To a certain degree, if there was a time for us to, for this to happen, I think now is like, I, w- I wouldn't say the best time, but it is a, it is ideal because time. Of, yeah, <laughs> I don't know whether <laughs> ideal is the word, but because of the technology that we have now, it actually makes things easier, lah. Not just the technology, but the internet quality, uh, the, the price services. Of, yeah, the services, the price of data, um, everything has all come together to make this bearable for all of us. Um, the horizon still seems uncertain, but uh, I think to your point, Alex. Things are getting better. Uh, it is April 22nd. Um, I don't see the MCO being lifted. The next one is going to be lift. was said to be lifted on what? 26, right? 28. 28. So the uh, MCO was extended to April 28th. 
uh, I don't see that's going to be lifted. I, I do see that the government will try to um, make green zones bigger and bigger and like really isolate the red zones. And I think that's a good thing. I do see that maybe um, MCO will be lifted, uh, uh, not to say, to say partially, but in stages, staggered. Yep. Um, and, and, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but at the same time, it's also our responsibility to make sure that it has it is maintained. Yep. So um, if you guys are watching this or listening to this, uh, let me know how you guys are coping with MCO using technology. Um, I If you are from a group, like a B40 group or M40 group, or know somebody from B40, I'm really interested to know their stories and how they are coping with life in the MCO. Um, and yeah, uh, that's that's about it from me. Is there anything else you want to say, Alex? Well, um, nothing much. Basically, I think we're going to see some like a transition phase to the new normal. Uh, we won't be back to normal 100%, but I think yeah. we still need to, in, to practice social distancing. Uh, probably there won't be any big events coming up soon for the, maybe the next six months or one year. Mm. But I think the government is doing a good effort for now. And I think we are progressively opening up to the new normal. I think we see mm. more shops being open at mm. limited hours. Mm. And I think progressively, I think we should be able to go out. But yeah, like I said, um, you need to practice social distancing and keep washing your hands. <laughs> yeah. Now now you remind me about about shops. Uh, the the bubble shop still cannot open, right? No, nope, cannot. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that could be the last thing that's gonna be open. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I've already grown a beard and I haven't gotten my hair I haven't gotten my haircut, so it's no no big deal. Okay, yeah, I echo you Alex. I'm looking forward to just continuing with my life, looking forward to being able to go out there, looking forward for, for people to be able to start earning a living and stuff like that. Okay, guys, uh, so that's pretty much it from us. This is LTA. Uh, we've been talking about technology and how it has been helping us in uh, in the MCO. Um, as always, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for subscribing to our channel. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the show. Uh, comments and suggestions we love that we love your feedback we love to discuss with you um, please do share them in the comment section below uh, if you're listening to us on podcast please do give us a five star review if you like the show because that really helps us in uh, getting the show to more people out there in podcast land uh, okay everybody this is Amin this is Alex and uh, as always thanks very much for watching catch you guys later bye bye